What's up? I'm Drew Paul Bell. And in this video, I want to talk about a question that I've gotten at least four times in the last week. And I've gotten a lot of times like over the whole time of making YouTube videos on here. And it's that, all right, so people will come and they'll ask me, they'll be like, okay, so I'm thinking about majoring in architecture, but I'm not good at math. You have to do a lot of math to be, to be an architect. And I think this is a weird question. I don't really understand it, partly because like, I, don't know, I never identified with not being good at math. Um, so like, I don't, I don't really know how to really relate to that, but I'll, I'll give my perspective on this. And it's the, all right, what I worry about when people will say this is like, what part of math are you not good at? Like, are you not good at addition and subtraction? Or are you not good at like multiplication? Or is it like trigonometry that trips you up? Or is it like calculus that trips you up? Or is it like the unit circle? Like, I haven't seen that since high school, by the way. I think that's what it's called. I'm not even sure. Uh, are you like, I had a buddy who, um, he and I would work on our physics homework together up in studio some nights back in when we were in college. And like, I realized what he had trouble with was actually in a solving for X in an equation. Like he didn't really get like the order of operations type of thing to like isolate a variable on one side of an equal sign. And he struggled with that. Um, like th there's a lot of pieces of this puzzle that, you know, you could be bad at, I guess, but like, I still, I said I wasn't good at math. I was, I, I felt like I always struggled with writing though. All right. Until I was in like the 11th grade. And when I was in the 11th grade, I finally had like a great writing teacher and he taught me how to write in like two weeks, like the first two weeks of the year. And I basically had all the, found, all the fundamentals that I needed to know. And like, I was just like one, one teacher away from getting it. So like, if you tell yourself, I'm not good at math, don't just tell yourself you're bad at math. Like that's not going to help you get any better, right? You can get better and don't accept that like you're not good at it. If it's something that you need to do, um, like go find somebody who's good at math, not only good at math, but good at math and good at teaching. Okay. Cause that's a skill all in of itself as well. You have to find somebody who can actually communicate to you. Don't find someone who's like just great at math and expect them to be able to teach it to you. They might not know how to relate it to someone who thinks differently. If what you struggle with is like equations, like in geometry class, you don't remember how to do like, how to deal with like if you don't remember what was the area of the circle versus how do you do the, the volume of a sphere or that kind of thing, don't worry about that. All right. It's important to be good at geometry and understand like the basic premise, like premises, like, okay, like if this triangle is this size, other triangle is the exact same dimension, exact same angles, but it's bigger. How do you, you know, it's proportional understanding like kind of some of the basic principles is important for architecture. That's very important because it's like we deal with geometries a lot but you don't have to be able to know how to like calculate calculate all the little things because like we're using computer programs now that you can just kind of like draw it and figure it out what they don't talk about in ninth grade geometry class is that if you actually have a triangle that is three has three three inches on one side and uh four inches on the other the hypotenuse is going to be five you can just measure that you know if it's at like a right angle and so like you can't that works great for a three four five triangle right you know that off the bat but when you're solving for like more complicated things that are going to have like fractions and decimals and stuff like that you can't just measure it with a with a ruler so they don't teach you how to do that in school but you're you're going to be at a workstation at a desk where you're going to be looking at a computer that has a drafting program on it so if you need to figure out like the hypotenuse of some angle or whatever like that or th the angle of like a roof slope for example or how to draw like a one in uh, a quarter inch and a foot slope of your concrete pad so that water flows away from the house and doesn't flood the house, right? If you're trying to figure out that kind of thing, you can just draw it. You have, you have a, a line tool and you draw the line tool out 12 inches and you draw it down a quarter of an inch and draw a line across, you got your hypotenuse, you got your slope. If you're doing, if you're having to measure the area of things like square footages or, uh, floor areas, any like floor area ratios, any of that sort of thing. Um, there's a tool on the computer to do that. Like you already have a floor plan, you measure it and it tells you the area. So don't worry about calculating those things either. That's not a big deal. Um, if you have trouble remembering any of those equations, again, you can just like have it on a scrap piece of paper. 
where, where math really comes into the, into the picture in architecture is actually with structures. And, but, but you're not doing the structures every single day. I mean, like there, there are periods of time throughout the design process where you're like, okay, well, we got to figure out where, where are the joists here? How thick, are the, how thick is the floor deck? How big do these beams need to be? How often do they, do they need to be spaced? How thick do the beams have to be? And like, understanding that that's probably the most math intensive part of the architectural process. But even then, like it's not as, it's not as complicated as what you might, is what I thought, I'll say this, it's not as complicated as what I thought before I got into, into the profession. Even in architecture school, in our structures class, they would have us do everything by hand. So you go to the table and you look up the moments and, the, and all, the, all the other variables of like this member of wood. And then you gotta go multiply it by the tributary area and plug it into this other equation, which plugs and then plug it into this other equation and draw your graph of like the shear and the moment, the bending and all this other stuff. And it's like, it's this long drawn out process to check if this one thing is gonna work. And then if it doesn't, you gotta start all over with something bigger. You gotta kind of guess a little bit bigger. And maybe that won't work either. Maybe there's some other option where you space them closer together. And you gotta do that too. Like nobody's got time for that. And, and it's, 20, like, it's 2016 as I'm recording this video. And we have computer programs where you plug in what you need to know and it gives you what you need. You have to understand the principles behind that. Doing it by hand, I think, probably probably sets up a good foundation for being able to go into using the computer for that kind of thing, but there's no sense in, you don't practice bleeding. Like, there's no point in continuing to like churn out these equations when like, you can do it much quicker with a computer program. And that's what we do. And at my firm, we do a lot of our own structural calculations on our own. If things get too complicated, we'll call the structural engineer. But anything, like we'll, we'll, we can do uh, wood columns, wood beams, steel columns and beams. Uh, we can do glue lambs. Once we get into like tension, tension rods and tension wires, or some, if we have to check for shear, shear calculations, we'll call a structural engineer for something like that. But most typical structural things that like we can handle, and we're not afraid of things like cantilevers and stuff like that. Like it's, it's not that bad. And with these programs, it's really not that daunting, the math behind it anyways. So I feel like there's really not that much, there's not a crippling amount of math in architecture. I feel like it's a very reasonable amount of math that you need to know. And if, if you're just like super terrible, what, here's the other thing I worry about though, okay? So I wanna make another, I wanna make another point. There's like, I think a lot of people say they're bad at math, but there's like this, psychological theory that the left side of your brain handles logic and that the right side of your brain handles creativity and a lot of people in society seem to believe there's like the crazy creatives who are just out there and they can't focus on anything they're not grounded and then there's the other people who are like nerds who there's a by the books and they just know the numbers and they crunch the numbers and that's it they don't know how to relate to people or be creative at all first of all there's not that strong of a dichotomy like you're not forced into one or the other. I, I really think a lot of people early on in their life, they probably resonate a little bit more with one or the other. And then they're told by other people, you have to fit in one of these two categories. And then they identify with that. They tell themselves that's who they are. They tell themselves they're creatives and they're messy. Or they tell themselves that like they're logical and everything's neat and orderly and by the books. But like, you don't have to be like that, number one. If you want to, go ahead. But in architecture, this is a profession that's really based on marrying those two things together. They have to coincide, they have to agree with, they have to, they have to find a balance. It's not about being all one or all the other. To be, to be a good architect, you have to find balance. You can definitely find one-sided architects, mediocre architects who are all one way and not the other, who are very logical and don't have any sense of style. And you can find other people who are very creative and are totally ungrounded and can't put a building together. Like, so they're out there. But those aren't the great architects. If you want to be a great architect, you got to find that balance. You got to be able to, to play in both arenas. So this left brain, right brain thing though. I do think that some people are more inclined towards one than the other. Maybe it's not even necessarily that they're bad at, at logic or that they're bad at creativity. But maybe it's that like, they genuinely are not interested. And the other side. If it's that you're not good at logic, because you don't 
like the logical thinking and you have no interest in doing that and engaging in that logical side of your brain and doing logical stuff, then indeed architecture is not for you. Architecture is largely about logic. Within the whole like process, architecture is probably 15% design. 15% like schematics, actually. That's when you're designing the look of the building. When you're doing that, it's usually not like everyone that's engaged in that. It's usually the more senior people or the designers, depending on what firm you're at. Um, but so like you probably won't even get to that point until later on in your career. A large part of, every, of architecture is like drawing details and making sure that everything goes together. In doing all that, you have to keep a mind on the creative my right side of your brain, right? The right side, the creative. But, um, but it, you, have to, you have to be engaged with that, but you still have to be very logical. During the logical times, you still have to have in mind the, uh, excuse me, during the creative times, you still have to have in mind the, uh, the sort of like the logical qualities. You have to know kind of how it's going to go together, have some sort of understanding of the materials of it and practicality, the mechanics of it. But yeah, like it's not, it's not art class. Architecture is like the closest thing, probably the closest thing to like a stable job that has to do with like the artistic creative side, but it also comes with a heavy dose of the logical side. Okay. And um, if, if what, if, if your situation is, if your deal is that you're like, you say, I don't, I'm not good at math, but really what the case is for you that like, if it's that you're very right brain dominant and not left brain dominant and you have no interest in developing that logical part of your brain, then this isn't for you. It's just not. And uh, yes, I, I would say that's probably probably the critical point. If it's not good at math or not good at math, it's good at logical thinking tied with creativity, like creative thinking, creativity. So yeah. That's actually the balance you need to have, but that's also one more caveat. That's not the balance that you need to have immediately. That's the balance you need to, to develop. You can come in and be a little bit out of balance, but still work on one, develop that until you're, you know, until you're a little bit more balanced. You can also um, find yourself a position that is more one than the other. There's really just a lot of things that vary, and this is one of the reasons why this question kind of bothers me a lot, because like there's so much you talk about it, and then it just looks like kind of this jumble of information in my own mind. And I, and I just feel like a lot of people that are asking it aren't even asking it, aren't even asking the right question. So anyway, I hope this cleared some things up. I hope this helped. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I hope this helps. I'll talk to you next time.